It seems like every year it takes more and more computing power just to use the internet. Computers that felt blazing fast when new often start to feel sluggish after only two or three years and unfortunately often end up as e-waste. But what if I told you all of that was a scam and we can have a perfectly enjoyable internet experience on this 1983 Apple IIe using just a couple of floppy disks and a very special ethernet card. Well, come join me for an 8-bit journey through the information superhighway, through the magic of Kentucky and the other net too. So stay tuned. I've had this lovely Apple IIe for many years now, long before I ever considered making videos about my vintage computing shenanigans. I picked it up for a couple hundred bucks from the original owner deep in the suburban sprawl of southern New Jersey, who listed it as non-working, but also failed to mention that it came with this beautiful and extremely hard to find Apple Color Monitor 100. The computer was totally dead, so I popped in a new power supply and motherboard, and now it works perfectly. Well, except for the S key, which is sometimes a little hard to get to register. Around the same time, around about late 2014, I discovered the magic of Othernet, an Ethernet card built for the Apple II line and sold through A2 Retro Systems. Unfortunately, due to some issues with the original line of cards, it was discontinued and a whole new card, Othernet 2, was developed, with that card finally shipping in 2016. But it was well worth that long wait. Paired with the magic of Contiki OS, I was online with the Apple IIe in a matter of minutes, browsing websites in text mode, and even chatting on IRC, all from a bunch of floppy disks that I was able to make myself through bootstrapping with ADT Pro. I was completely blown away. So let's pop this card back in the system and take a look at how to use it and see what it's capable of. And can you believe there was ever a time when Apple made it this easy to get into your computer? Absolutely amazing. Okay, so we're going to be installing the other net in slot number seven here, which is important to remember. We're going to need that later. And it's actually installed with the Ethernet port facing towards the interior of the computer, as in facing the keyboard here. And then, since I don't want to run an Ethernet cable from the wall to the internal jack here, I just got this little extender deal which gives me an ethernet jack hanging out the back and then I plug the other end of the cable into the internal jack here and it's a fairly clean setup. So the other net 2 card is only half the magic. The other half being the Contiki operating system. Contiki is a tiny open source OS created by Adam Dunkels in 2002, originally intended to run on low powered network microcontrollers with extremely limited resources. Picture stuff like traffic lights and alarm systems. But this also makes it a great fit for vintage computers. And so it's been ported to systems such as the Commodore 64 and 128, and of course the Apple II by Oliver Schmidt. And I'll link below to both A2 Retro Systems, which has pre-built floppy images for the Apple II, as well as to Oliver's GitHub page. This was also around the time I learned about ADT Pro, an amazing little program which lets you bootstrap the Apple II from a modern machine without ever having to worry about floppies right through the audio port. So even though I already have these Contiki discs made up, I still want to quickly show you the whole process from bootstrap to web browsing in case you want to try this yourself. Today's vintage Apple shenanigans are brought to you by Morning Brew, which is honestly really cool because I've been subscribed to the Morning Brew newsletter, which is totally free by the way, for quite a while now. Instead of waking up in the morning and mindlessly doom scrolling social media, I look forward to Morning Brew. It's a free daily newsletter that comes out Monday through Sunday and gets you up to speed on stuff like business, finance, and tech in just five minutes. And unlike wading through the minefield that is traditional news, which is somehow both dry and depressing, Morning Brew is witty, relevant, and informative. I really enjoyed their coverage of the Apple AirTag launch, mulling over the implications of their ultra-wideband tech and a new reality of a hidden digital layer of objects in the real world. So definitely check out Morning Brew, it's completely free, takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe, and really helps out the channel. 
So I've got the ADT server app here running on my M1 MacBook Pro, and that's the app that you're gonna download from ADT. And honestly, it's shockingly easy to use. We're gonna be using the audio bootstrapping method, which means we just need to have an audio cable, which has two ends, and we're gonna plug one into the MacBook Pro's headphone port, and then we click audio here, and we can do bootstrapping Pro DOS and we have a bunch of stuff that we can send to the Apple II straight over the audio port as if it was being read from a cassette player. So in this case, we would send the ADT Pro audio client, but for some reason it doesn't like to work on my machine. So I would send the DOS ADT client here. And then this tells us exactly what to do on the Apple II. And then over here in the Apple II, we have to first make sure we plug the audio cable into the correct port, which is the cassette input port. And that's the one with the little pictogram of the cassette and the arrow pointing down. And then we turn on the Apple II, and of course we have no disk in right now, so we just get the Apple II logo at the top of the screen. But if we hit Control and then Reset, it dumps us out into the basic prompt. And from here, ADT Pro is actually telling us exactly what to do. We type in call minus 151 to get into the monitor program. And then we type in the code that ADT Pro gives us. In this case, 8031E38R and hit enter, well, return. And then we hit OK in ADT Pro and it begins sending the bootstrap data. Once the transfer is complete, the Apple II beeps and then ADT Pro tells us what to type in next, and if all's gone correctly, actually, we'll have a star and a blinking cursor on a new line again, which we do. So ADT tells me to type in 803G, which should start ADT Pro. Yeah, and there we go. So this was transferred from my M1 MacBook Pro over audio to the Apple IIe. And now we have all kinds of different options. We can send files, receive files, we can configure things. And ADT Pro lets us format disks and write files to those disks, which is how we write the Contiki disk images that you'll get from A2 Retro Systems onto a disk. Okay, so jump cut to these disks already being created. I don't want to go through the kind of tedious process of actually creating these disks through ADT Pro by transferring disk images because it takes a long time and the ADT Pro documentation is pretty good. There's a lot of very nice pictures to guide you through the process and I'll definitely link that below. But what I've created here is, well, first an ADT Pro disk so I don't have to bootstrap this again. I've created a Contiki IRC client disk, a Contiki Telnet server disk, and a Contiki web browser disk. And the way this works is that each of these disks has both the full Contiki OS as well as one or two apps on it because, of course, these disks are fairly low density at about 360K. So it's actually pretty incredible that you can fit a full operating system with a TCP IP stack for networking plus these fancy apps all on one disk. But we'll start with the web browser disk and take a look at what it's like to browse the internet from a single floppy disk on an Apple II. So on the Contiki web browser disk, we have a bunch of applications available, and that's everything here that ends with .system, including the web browser, which is webbrowse.system, and wget.system, which is for downloading files across the network. So first, the fconfig application here is going to let us tell Contiki what Ethernet card we're using and what slot it's in. So here we have othernet2, that's number 2, and it's in slot 7. And that's going to save the configuration to the disk so we don't have to enter it every time we start the system. Next we do ipconfig, which lets us set our network parameters. So you can see I've already configured this for my own network and, oh, I forgot to mention, the mouse works. Contiki OS is fully mouse enabled, which is pretty incredible. So I have set this up as .77 on my network. The gateway in my house is 10001 
and I'm using the Cloudflare DNS server at 1.1.1.1. And we can also request an IP address through DHCP, which is pretty incredible. So I'll leave that configured as it was. All right, and now let's check out the web browser. And here is the Contiki web browser, which actually with the mouse enabled is kind of really convenient and really rather modern aside from being text-based, so no images. But we can go to any website here and we can connect to it. Now it's not gonna do HTTPS, but luckily there are a lot of sites on the internet that do HTTP, including google.com. So here's what Google looks like on an Apple II with Contiki, a surprisingly usable page. Oh no, look at that. <laughs> so Google loads in Contiki extremely slowly. Of course, this is a modern website and this text-based browser had to download the whole page and then filter out all of the non-text stuff. But now I can actually toot my own horn a little bit and talk about one of my own contributions to retro computing. I've actually created two websites geared towards vintage computers and using those sites on an Apple IIe with Contiki was actually one of my targets. So the first site we'll look at, 68k.news, is full Google News stripped down and proxied to work well on very low resource machines over very low bandwidth connections. So this takes Google News actually from the RSS feed and parses that down to extremely basic HTML. And it's actually an extremely usable experience. And we can go to the various sections of the news. So we have top world, nation, business, technology, entertainment, sports, science, and health. And I'm most interested, of course, in science. And we can read these science headlines. But what's most important is that we can actually click through two news articles and 68K News will proxy those articles through some custom PHP that I wrote that uses Mozilla's readability library to parse it down to extremely basic text in extremely basic HTML. And that amounts to letting you read these stories as if they were extremely quickly loading text pages. So here we have this article and we can read it in pure text mode almost as if it was written that way. And if you're curious how I built this service, I did make a video where I went into a little bit more detail of exactly how this works. But 68K News was the first website that I built for this purpose to let old computers browse the internet. And then I took this kind of technology and I adapted it in an even more broad sense. And I built a site called frogfind.com. So if we go to frogfind.com, this is actually a search engine that I built in, again, extremely basic HTML, and it wraps around DuckDuckGo search results, but in extremely basic HTML. And you can see this loaded extremely quickly because the main search page is just super simple HTML. But if I search for something like Apple IIe, this is going to go through DuckDuckGo, but parse the results down to just the most basic HTML possible. And you can see here, this loaded extremely quickly, even faster than 68k.news, because this has to do a lot less processing on the server side. And we can scroll down in search results. But what's more important is that we can actually click through to any of these search results and actually view the page. So I'll click through to the Wikipedia for Apple. And this is going to do the same thing that 68k.news did. This is going to parse the Wikipedia page down 
through a proxy I built on frogfind.com using the Mozilla Readability Library, which is what powers Firefox's reader mode. And the end result is it's going to be just extremely basic text content. But most importantly, all the links on the page work. So here's the Wikipedia article for Apple Inc., which we're reading here on an Apple IIe. And we can click on stuff in here. So I'll click on technology company and we'll go to the article for technology company. So using FrogFind, we can literally browse the internet as if it was built for vintage computers, which is honestly, it's something that I've always dreamed about doing. And I'm so happy that I was able to figure out a way to do it. And I've made both of them open source and I'll link to the GitHub where I put the source code for both of these up and feel free to take it and use it and do whatever you want with it. And some people have actually already taken it and done that. So there's actually a Newton version of FrogFind called NewtFind, which uses my code here modified a bit so that it works better on an Apple Newton. But yeah, web browsing on this 1983 Apple IIe works just fine. I could honestly just read Wikipedia in this way all night. It's pretty fun to do and it's very usable. And now what's almost even more exciting to me is the Contiki IRC application. So I've already configured this to my network so we don't have to do that. We can simply launch into the IRC client. Now if you're not familiar with IRC it stands for Internet Relay Chat and it's one of the oldest methods of chat on the internet. And my favorite IRC channel to join is the 68K MLA channel. And I'll enter my nickname here so I can be, well, Action Retro. And this is connecting to the IRC server. And then all I have to do to join a channel is backslash join hash the name of the channel. So 68K MLA. And here we are connected to IRC with our 1983 Apple IIe. And we've got some people already in chat. That's pretty cool. Okay, so the final disk that I made is a Contiki Telnet disk. And that's the other disk out of the three. This is actually a Telnet server to connect to your Apple II from another machine. And honestly, I'm not too sure what you can really do with that. So yeah, I'm not going to play with this today because all of my fun is had on IRC and you know, browsing the internet with the text-based web browser. So that'll do it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed seeing just how much awesome internet stuff you can actually still do with a really old computer. This 1983 Apple IIe can browse the internet, read the news, and chat on IRC. And honestly, it's a lot of fun doing that. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more vintage Apple and Macintosh shenanigans like this, Please subscribe down below and thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Dirk, Justin, Chris, Greg from Rut K Mods, Sorta Eclectic, Spike, and Connor, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters who help make these videos possible. <laughs>